so much has been happening in uh, the world of the economy and of course uh, the shocker this week that got many of us surprised as uh, yes how much determined President Uhuru Kenya, Kenyatta and equally of course the likes of uh, the DPP and the DCI are focused on the fight against corruption though at some point in time curtailed with what we see you know when it gets to that level of the court but we can only hope that indeed uh, this is going to serve as a lesson to great um, to very many people who have focused on uh, swindling you know the taxpayers money out here so we have so much uh, right here and it's uh, a happy morning and indeed we'll be discussing the Kenya Airways nationalization talk that has been ongoing for a long time but officially looks like it is agreed upon by the members of parliament that this is the way to go then we question how possible this is going to come in to salvage the dwindling of course Kenya Airways entity and we also take a look at uh, the impact of Rotich's arrest to the economy uh, remember that very time there was that arrest uh, economists argued that maybe President Uru Kenyatta would have stepped in pretty fast to get a replacement but he took his time probably a day or so and then we got a replacement uh, of course of uh, this uh, cabinet secretary who was in the docket of labor, as one would argue, labor is more of a humble docket in comparison to what treasury is all about. And now the question at hand is whether he's going to be the right man to step into the shoes of Rotich and actually make the best out of them. So that is basically what we'll be discussing this morning uh, with my panel. But then again, before we get to that, let's just take a look at some of these stories that are here two, three of them, and now Oscar Sudi calls upon President Uhuru Kenyatta to resign. The very same people in the Jubilee party always say that uh, Jubilee is intact, no differences at all. But then when Oscar Sudi comes out to say that there is a clear uh, shift and a drift <coughs> on uh, the marriage between President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy, and it looks like it is irreversible, then what does it mean? While the members of parliament themselves have been telling us that there's no problem in Jubilee, just some few differences that can always be looked into. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, uh, a person like Oscar Sudi is one person that you will naturally not want to take seriously, uh. considering uh, the kind of uh, talk that he normally has. Yeah. But knowing that he comes from Rift Valley and is a close ally of the deputy, the deputy president, president yeah. he's being used to send a message. Uh. And these are the kind of people who are normally used to send a message. And the message is very clear that the house is not uh, in order. In order. Uh. And Jubilee, as it is, is actually about to implode from within. Right. And it's something that we've known for a very long time. Uh -huh that it may not work for, for, for long for, for Jubilee. So what we, for us, what we can only tell them is that they need to make a decision quickly. Uh. That if they want to continue working as Jubilee, because if their failures are attributed to this government, uh. then they are actually attributed to the Jubilee government. Yeah. Not only the president, but the deputy president also, uh. because he is part of the presidency. So we cannot look the other way and say, the president has failed, but the deputy has not failed. So if there's failure, and I liked what he said uh, at the end of the day, right. the president and the deputy president have to step aside. Mm -hmm. So we can't focus on one person. Right. But then again, I know the president is trying to take charge of the party, and we just hope that uh, they can be able to sort out these things. And people have been crying for a reshuffle. Yeah. And it's something that uh, has not come out clearly from, from, from the president. Mm -hmm. Remember, for the last seven years, the president has not done a major major cabinet reshuffle. reshuffle yeah. And it's something that we hope can be done that can be able to cool waters and uh, we move forward as a nation. Uh -huh. Kenya power and all these power issues that we are witnessing today. So one of the stories highlighted on page eight of the Daily Nation says that consumers to pay for stolen power tokens. Anyway, we've been paying for that all the same. Utility firms say fraud was perpetrated by 13 staff members who have since been dismissed. The matter is now under investigation. So we've really had a standoff in this power docket for the longest of time. Why is it that we always go in rounds, 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 but still Kenyans are not getting anything uh, worth, of course, the amount of money that they pay for all this? You know, sometimes it surprises us how much we pay for, for electricity in the country. Uh, uh -huh. And for a country to grow, Energy is something that is key because yeah. that is what drives industries. And when you have uh, power being this expensive, so most of our products cannot be able to compete in the market. And the, the issues that have been at KPLC, uh -huh. they go back to the previous regime, which of course was completely eliminated yeah. through court cases. And we have a new regime that has taken over. And it's good that they are now being, becoming proactive to pick out these issues and share to us instead of waiting for the Auditor General uh -huh. some, or a whistleblower to pick them. And we just hope that they can be able to seal the loopholes completely 
so that every morning I can say I'm paying for what I use. Oh. Yeah. Not the, the kind of uh, conmanship that has been going on with how people access uh, power. Right. And uh, of course, as a, a public uh, organization, we want the organization to be very profitable and at the same time as give us the the service that we want yeah. at a low price that so that we can be able to be co competitive. Uh, yeah. Okay, we hope <coughs> that they fix that. Uh, interesting story right here as to how much indeed uh, our bigger brothers have managed to penetrate Africa and get the best of our resources. And every other time it makes us worried. So the latest is that Qatar State Company gets Lamu Oil Exploration Blocks. And of course, um, this is a story that is highlighted on page eight of the... Daily Nation and equally on the front page of the Business Daily. And they say Qatar Petroleum State-owned company of the energy-rich Arab nation has acquired a block of Kenya's offshore oil and gas exploration fields, adding to a growing list of global corporations seeking to exploit huge fuel deposits believed to be underneath the Indian Ocean seabed. Should we be worried or should we smile? I mean, it's a new venture for, for the country uh -huh. because we've traditionally not relied on oil. Yeah. And it's something that we Kenyans have been hoping can actually be able to move this country to the next level. Uh -huh. The problem is that we're not competitive enough when it comes to exploration. Uh -huh. So we have to rely again on these countries that have done it all along and they have been very successful. Yeah. And that's why probably you've seen that has been given to, to Qatar. Uh -huh. For us as a country, we just want to see this done successfully and of course bring in uh, uh, forex uh -huh. to, to the nation. Yeah. Yes. Okay.